The Indian Institute of Banking and Finance has played a key role in strengthening the financial system in general and the banking system in particular in our country. Set up in 1928, it is 87 years old. Uh, during this long journey, uh, the Institute has trained thousands of bank employees to perform their job better. My association with the Institute was close during the years 92 to 97 when I was the governor of the Reserve Bank of India and because of that position I was also the president of the Institute. I recall the number of changes uh, that uh, the Institute introduced uh, during that uh, period. That was a period in which the banking system in India underwent dramatic and fundamental changes. The banking system for the first time had to face a new situation in which prudential norms were introduced, capital adequacy ratio was introduced and banks had to provide adequately against bad and doubtful loans. All these changes were traumatic in character and the banking system and the banking personnel had to experience, had to go through a period of learning and that was a period in which I think the, the, the institute played once again a very important role in training the bank employees into the new uh, paradigm into which the banking system was entering. I must say it was not an easy experience. Uh, banks until then had no definite uh, provisioning norms. The definition of what constitutes a non-performing asset was not known. All these were introduced for the first time. Simultaneously, uh, there is a big change that is happening in the field of technology. The banking system was no longer to be run in the way in which it was being done before. Technology brought about significant changes in the working of the, the banking system. So the paradigm shift in terms of prudential norms, capital adequacy and so on, combined with the technological changes required the uh, the Institute of Banking to uh, completely uh, change the syllabus, the curriculum of uh, the courses that they were uh, being offered, that were being offered. The uh, AIIB, which is the uh, flagship program then, and I, and I think it continues to be so now, is very important because uh, the personnel who are recruited to the banking system come with different backgrounds. Many of them have uh, no exposure to accounting or finance. They have been pure science graduates or pure art graduates. They had to be trained and they had to know what banking is and what finance is and what accounting is. And therefore this certificate program uh, which was offered by uh, the Indian uh, uh, Institute of Banking and Finance was very important. I am happy to know that since that period, uh, the, um, the Institute has adapted itself to further changes in the Indian financial system and the banking system. Uh, the technological change which I mentioned earlier had just begun at that time. Now it has come a full circle and I think it's uh, the banking system is today largely driven by technology. Whether it is meeting the needs of the customers, um, at the counter or transfer of funds uh, electronically. Uh, the banking system is going through a, a big change and simultaneously uh, there are new issues that have come up. For example, financial inclusion has become an important uh, agenda uh, before the, the banks. Therefore, uh, people thought in terms of introducing uh, business correspondents and business facilitators. I understand the institute is now offering a certificate program uh, to train people or to get uh, the facilitators and the correspondents well trained. Similarly, risk management 
has become a very key thing as far as banks are concerned because uh, the environment in which banking is operating has changed. Um, uh, there are uh, risks uh, associated uh, with interest rate changes. There are risks associated with the, price, with the changes in the prices of assets. Therefore, risk management has become critically important. And I do find the institute offering courses in that area also. Basically, India is today well integrated with the rest of the world. International banking has also become critically important. The exchange rate prior to 92-93 was largely determined by the Reserve Bank of India. I used to do that job as a deputy governor every morning at 9 o'clock. We changed the system in 92, uh, 93. Uh, we moved towards a market determined exchange rate system. And therefore banks had, had to get used to the new exchange rate regime under which they have to operate. But a system where exchange rates are determined by the markets is also more risky and therefore um, how to cover oneself against the risks that come because of the, inter uh, the interest rate changes and the exchange rate changes has become important. So what is very important is for uh, the institute uh, to be uh, alive and to be conscious of the changes that are occurring in the banking system and to offer courses and programs suited uh, to it. The one point that I would like to make is the programs based upon classroom attendance is no longer possible. It is not possible to train thousands and thousands of people through that mechanism. The uh, technology has become important and there are methods now using uh, the uh, more uh, recently available electronic equipment to teach people. Therefore, teaching methodology has to change. Keeping uh, the availability of new technology uh, and therefore uh, that is a way uh, to reach out to thousands and thousands of people at the, at the same time. I, in conclusion, I would only say that uh, the institute has done extremely well. I think its certification programs and the flagship programs are well recognized. And uh, uh, the, the human um, resources in the banking industry has become stronger, partly because of uh, the important role played by the institute. I wish the institute all success in its future endeavors. And as I said, the success depends upon the institute adapting itself efficiently to the changing circumstances. So, there are also other banking institutes in the country. What sets IIBF apart from the other institutes? What do you think? Well, the, there is scope for a large number of institutions in a country like ours. Uh, but the focus of the institute should be on training employees in the, in the banks. First of all, there is a certain amount of basic training which is needed by everyone who enters the banking industry. That training has been given by the institute of bankers for a very long time. That training is not being given by anybody else. It is a matter of training, not a few hundreds, but a few thousands. That training program is unique, in my opinion, to the Indian Institute of Banking and Finance. Uh, that they should continue to do, and that they should do it very efficiently. The other programs uh, that are being offered, uh, should be in tune with what I called earlier the changing circumstances. Uh, the success of the institute will depend upon identifying the new avenues for training. Uh, therefore, there is a need and there is, I think, a role 
that the institute can play despite the fact there are other institutions providing training. Sir, you have been the chairman of the institute yourself. You have been closely associated with the institute. What do you think is the main strength of this institute? The main strength is that this is an institution of bankers themselves. The institute uh, was originally uh, started by, by the banks and it continues to be um, funded, operated by, by the banks. So, it is their own institution. Therefore, in that sense that the uniqueness of the institution is that the banks themselves felt the need for a certain type of training and that training was being given by the, the institute. Thank you, sir. sir. Huh?